Hello, everybody. Now I want to start getting to why we were interested in power series. This is sort of a warm up to the big deal, which is Taylor series. Um, so I want to remind you that we had um, this lovely formula for a geometric series. The geometric series, which is a r to the k, sum from k equals 0 to infinity, which remember just means a plus a r plus a r squared. Remember, we could actually figure out exactly what that was equal to. That sum converged, and it converged to the number a over 1 minus r, as long as r is absolute value less than 1. To connect that to power series, I just want to call r x. And for now, let's just set a equal to 1 to make our lives easier. Then that formula becomes the power series x to the k, k equals 0 to infinity. So that's just the series 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. That is equal to 1 over 1 minus x, as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. Remember what that means. What that means is if you cut this infinite sum off at some finite point, you'll then be looking at a polynomial. That polynomial will be a good approximation to this function on this interval, the interval from minus 1 to 1. OK, and we'll, we'll explore that next time a little bit. Um, but uh, first, I want to say that um, if we went through our, you know, we know how to calculate the interval of convergence of this power series. Um, we do the ratio test, check the endpoints. And if you do that here, I'm going to do it super quick. You take the limit of the n plus first term over the nth term, which is just x to the n plus 1 over x. So you get the absolute value of x. That converges absolutely when the absolute value of x is less than 1. And then you plug in the endpoints. If you plug in x equals 1 or x equals minus 1 into this formula, then you see that um, both of those become divergent by the divergence test. So we get an interval of convergence minus 1 to 1, which is just where the sum equals the function. That is generally what's going to happen. If you have a formula that um, sometimes agrees with the infinite sum, it will generally agree on the interval of convergence. Wherever the, the sum converges, it converges to that function. And outside, they've got nothing to do with each other. Um, So this is one infinite series where we can write out what it converges to. We can find a lot more by playing with that one example. So here are three things we can do. We can multiply that function, 1 over 1 minus x, times any function in particular times any power of x. We can substitute anything in um, for, I'm sorry for that capital R, that's an error. Um, uh, for x on both sides of the equation, and we can combine these in rearranged terms. So let me show you what I mean by that. None of that is really clear until I express it. If I give you a formula like this, you recognize that as 3x squared times the one we know a power series for. So as long as x is between minus 1 and 1, we can replace that power series by this infinite sum, and then the distributive law works perfectly well for infinite sums. 3x squared times a sum is the same as the sum of 3x squared times each term. So you can bring functions inside the sum, functions and constants. Uh, um, you can bring stuff outside the sum as long as it doesn't depend on k. And this is a lot like the rules for integrals, that you can bring constants inside the integral, but you can't bring things that depend on x because they are x is the variable of integration. It behaves like k. Um, so all of that means here, when we write 3x squared times x to the k, we can simplify that same base, x squared x to the k, add the exponents, and we get the power series 3x to the k plus 2. That worked whenever absolute value of x is less than 1, and any time that's not true. The series diverges when you multiply 3x squared. It still diverges. Okay, So we just created a new power series representation, and we were able to see its interval of convergence directly, although you could just as well find the interval convergence by our usual ratio test method. 
So that's the first trick. Here's the second trick. If you have an expression like 1 over 1 plus x or 1 minus 3x squared, you can um, make that look like 1 over 1 minus something. So in the first case, 1 over 1 plus x is 1 over 1 minus negative x. 1 over 1 minus 3x squared is 1 over 1, 1 over 1 minus 3x squared. So in each case, you're replacing in the formula 1 over 1 minus x, you're replacing x with some more complicated expression. Minus x, 3x squared, could be anything. Um, so uh, as long as the thing in parentheses is absolute value less than 1, this equality still holds. You can still replace um, the 1 over 1 minus anything with the sum of anything to the k, right? Because we called it x just now, but earlier we called it r. You can call it at minus x or 3x squared, whatever you like. So this is now an infinite series. It takes a few rules of exponents tricks to write it as a power series. Minus x to the k is the same thing as minus 1 to the k times x to the k. So here's our um, power series representation. Let me just remind you what that means. Um, let's get rid of some of this stuff in the way here. Um, minus 1 to the k, x to the k, if you start plugging k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, um, you get 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed. So that is equal to 1 over 1 plus x when, whenever absolute value of x, absolute value of minus x is less than 1, which is the same thing as absolute value of x is less than 1. So this also has a radius of con an interval of convergence from minus 1 to 1. Same thing happens over here. You replace um, x with 3x squared. Wherever you see x in the sum, raised to the k, you just raise 3x squared to the k. Rules of exponents tell you that that is 3 to the k times x squared to the k. Another rule of exponent tells you that's 3 to the k times x to the 2k. And here's what that looks like. When k equals 0, it's 1. When k equals 1, it's 3 to the 1 times x to the 2, and so on. Uh, that should be a plus sign, another error. And we'll fix that in the notes. Um, and then to find the interval of convergence, remember we, we wanted the thing being raised to the k here has to be absolute value less than 1. So that's what you always start with. Absolute value of 3x squared is less than 1. You can pull the 3 outside of the absolute value and bring it to the other side of the inequality. Absolute value of x squared and absolute value of x squared are the same thing. So you take the square root of both sides, and we get the absolute value of x is less than square root of 1 third, or 1 over the square root of 3, and that makes the interval of convergence look like this. And then finally, you can kind of combine those two your goal is always to try and make this expression look like 1 over 1 minus something with maybe some other stuff out here. So if you see 1 over 2 minus x, you're missing the 1 minus. So we divide top and bottom by 2. So we get 1 half over 1 minus x over 2. So that becomes 1 half. That's a constant outside. The quantity that we originally called x is now x over 2. Bring the half inside, and then x to the k over 2 to the k. Combine common base different exponents. We get 1 over 2 to the k plus 1 times x to the k. Here's a very tricky one. 1 over 2x minus x squared. We don't even have, a, we don't have any constant in there, so we're going to add and subtract 1. Um, so we add 1 and subtract 1, and then to make it 1 minus something, I'm going to put the remaining terms. So this is 1 minus 1 plus 2x, and then I'm factor out a minus sign. So this becomes 1 over 1 minus this expression, which is simplifies to 1 over 1 minus the quantity x minus 1 squared. Um, as always, the sum becomes um, uh, the sum of what was in parentheses to the k, 
rules of exponents tell you that is x minus 1 raised to the 2k, and that's a power series. Um, it is 1 plus x minus 1 squared plus yet another error, x minus 1 to the fourth. Um, in the first case, the interval of convergence is the quantity we plugged in for x was x minus 2, so the absolute value of that has to be less than 1. Multiply both sides by 2, we get the absolute value of x is less than 2. So that is the interval minus 2 to 2. The second one, we replaced uh, x with x minus 1 squared, so its absolute value has to be less than 1. That means that absolute value of taking the square root of both sides, absolute value of x minus 1 has to be less than 1. And remember, that gives you an interval from 0 to 2. Centered at 1, radius 1. So you go from 1 minus 1 to 1 plus 1. OK, here's some more examples to try. Next lecture, I am going to talk about derivatives and integrals. And we'll really start to get some useful formulas. I will also talk a little bit about um, what it means to approximate, to identify a function and a sum, an infinite sum.